Hi, welcome to Keto with JT. I'm JT, I'm a certified keto and intermittent fasting coach. And today I wanna to share with you a do eat list and a don't eat list for reducing inflammation. This is based on a text that my friend Carl Dobbins sent me a while ago. He and I started trail running when we were in our late 40s. We're almost 50 and we choose now to get into running. We're the oldest trail runners out here. <laughs> and the whole reason we started doing that is because we have a goal to go to the Grand Canyon and run across and back again, rim to rim to rim, and we're trying to do that in 16 hours. Bam! <laughs> We've been working on this for a few years, and uh, one of the things that Carl has been dealing with is some joint stiffness and joint pain. So he did some little some research, and he sent me a text saying, mm. hey, this is what I've gotta do to get 16 hours. And mainly it's focused on reducing joint pain. What we're gonna talk about today is reducing inflammation, because if you reduce inflammation, then you can reduce joint pain altogether. So we're going to start with the don't eat list, and then we're gonna then we'll go to the do eat list to wrap this all up. The qualifier is this goes along with the exercise program that you're already doing, or the exercise program that you're getting ready to start, right? Okay, so let's jump into our don't eat list. And first on the list we have, surprise, surprise, sugar. <laughs> so sugar has been shown in many studies and it will cause in the body to, redu uh, to release inflammatory compounds, which can lead to inflammation and joint stiffness, all right? And that, I think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of information out there. It's hard for someone not to have heard at least that a little bit, right? But if you haven't heard it, if you're hurting, hearing it for the first time, sugar can cause inflammation. It's one of the number one things. So that's one thing we want to avoid. Next we have on our list, omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6s aren't actually bad in and of themselves. It's the problem is the amount of it. When we're on a regular standard American diet, what happens is we have high amounts of omega-6s and very low amounts of omega-3s, and that can cause inflammation. And the omega-6 options that we have available usually come in the form of very highly processed, very rancid seed oils. Some examples include vegetable oil, canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, and on and on and on and on. These are all things that are very high in omega-6s, very highly processed, and can lead to high amounts of inflammation. So those are things that are on our don't eat list. So next on our list, we have junk food. <laughs> I'm sure you were expecting that, right? The reason that junk food is on our list, because junk food very often contains high amounts of sugar and high amounts of these omega-6 oils that we were just talking about. So we want to avoid those. Some examples include cakes and cookies and french fries and potato chips and margarine. I, the thing that's been, you know, sort of advertised as a healthy alternative to butter is actually mostly comprised of soybean oil or some other quite kind of industrial seed oil, which again, we wanna avoid for all the reasons we just talked about. So that brings us to the next item on our list, which is carbs. And we're really especially talking about highly refined, highly processed carbohydrates. Oftentimes, these are converted to sugar in our bloodstream much faster, even than regular table sugar, which can cause a significant insulin spike and may lead to inflammation, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Next we have MSG. There's a lot of studies showing that MSG is, is especially overconsumption of MSG can lead to inflammation. Next we have trans fats, then we have aspartame. Aspartame is the predominant sweetener in diet soda. And even though, like this is a keto channel, so I talk about things in the context of keto, and even though a diet soda won't necessarily kick you out of ketosis, we have to understand that aspartame is actually a neurotoxin. Oftentimes the body will see that as a foreign substance that, and, it, and, it, and it attacks it, which then can cause inflammation. So it's just something to keep in mind. After that, we have mayo. And mayo, you know, mayo in and, it's, in and of itself isn't really bad. Most of the ingredients in a good mayonnaise are really good ingredients. The problem is when the base is something like soybean oil, which a lot of the uh, mainstream mayonnaise brands are that's what they are. They're mostly soybean oil and then the rest of the ingredients that, that are listed. If you wanna do mayo, we want to actually consider a, an option that is the base is olive oil or avocado oil rather than one of these like soybean oil, these other oils that we talked about earlier. Other than that, you know, if you can get one of those, then mayo is actually a really good choice. It would go on our dewy list. Then we have pizza 
It's kind of out of order, right? Pizza is supposed to be on a junk food list for all the reasons we mentioned earlier. Then we have grains. That goes again with the highly processed grains. We want to avoid grains. You know, a lot of times uh, people have a gluten sensitivity, which can lead to inflammation. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to avoid grain. Rounding out our don't eat list, this is sort of a, an optional don't eat list, right? And that's going to be tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, and peppers. These are all part of what we call the nightshade family. And even though there actually aren't any scientific studies that prove that nightshade family plants cause inflammation. But there are, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence, which means experiential evidence. People have had the experience. They ate a tomato, they ate eggplant, they ate some sort of nightshade, you know, vegetable, and have reported that it's caused them some joint pain or caused them some, some inflammation. The reason I wanted to include these is because if you experience those things for yourself individually, then that's something you want to consider. You may want to avoid that. I mean, if, if this tomato makes my joints hurt, then what should I do? Don't eat the tomato. That doesn't mean that is a cookie cutter approach and, and one size fits all type of a thing because you might be able to eat tomatoes and have no problem whatsoever. Or I might be able to eat tomatoes and have an issue, right? So for that, that these kind of fall into that category that may or may not cause inflammation. So we'll leave it at that. So that wraps up our don't eat list. Now let's get to our do eat list. For our do eat list, we're gonna start off with fatty fish. The reason we want to consider fatty fish, the reason it's like number one on the list, because it's a very good source of high quality protein and a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. Some good options include salmon, mackerel, sardines, and anchovies. They're not the only options, but these are some really good choices for you. So in order to talk about why we want to increase our omega-3s, I'm going to refer to a study by Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. In that study, they talk about omega-3s providing the starting point for making hormones that regulate clotting, contraction, and relaxation of arteries, as well as regulating inflammation. So one of the ways we can do that, if, especially if you don't like fish, is to start taking a fish oil. Just make sure you get a high quality one from wild caught fish. Another source that we could look to are chia seeds and flax seeds, which are both high in omega-3s. So next we have on our list, nuts. And the reason that nuts are on the list is because they're high in fiber, calcium, magnesium, zinc, vitamin E, and omega-3s, which all have been shown to have anti-inflammatory compounds. Good options would include walnuts, hazelnuts, pecan, Brazil nuts, macadamia nuts. These are all great options for nuts. Okay, so next on our dewy list, real butter as opposed to margarine. And olive oil as opposed to all these other oils we've talked about. Then we also are going to consider full fat cheeses. Now, if you have issues with dairy, you're going to want to avoid cheese altogether, right? Well, let's not make this too complicated. If you have issues with dairy, just avoid cheeses. If you don't, we want to look for full fat, minimally processed cheeses. European cheeses tend to be better. You can look at cheeses that are made from sheep's milk or goat's milk. Those can often be better than cheeses that are based on cow's milk. Generally, harder cheeses are better options than softer cheeses. These, this will give you some ideas of what to consider and what to look for when considering cheeses. After this, we have almond milk. And if you're considering an almond milk or other sort of nut milk, then you want to get an unsweetened version. This goes along with our idea of doing low carb and reducing sugar in our diet. Next, we have on our list, berries. The reason the berries are on our list is because they are loaded with vitamins. They are low glycemic, low sugar, and low carb. And some of the options that we want to consider would be blackberries and raspberries, strawberries, and a little bit of blueberries. After berries, we have dark leafy greens and other vegetables. Dark leafy greens can just contain a lot of fiber, contain lots of vitamins, nutrients, and minerals that are really good for us. And some options include spinach, kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, cabbage, and the list goes on. Next, we have eggs. You know, eggs have almost every vitamin uh, out there except for vitamin C. They're a great source of healthy fats and protein. So eggs we can include on our do eat list. Next on our do eat list, we have a list of spices that are have shown through one way or another to reduce inflammation, whether that's blocking an inflammatory pathway or reducing inflammation in some other way. And on that list, we'll include garlic, turmeric, ginger, and cinnamon. 
So that wraps it up for our do eat list. Now we have our do eat list and our don't eat list for reducing inflammation. I hope you've gotten some ideas of what you can do. Again, it's meant to be very general, not super comprehensive, and to spark some thoughts in your mind of what you can do in starting your own reduce your inflammation journey. If you've liked this video, please hit the like button. That would be awesome. And if you're interested in this topic, you may want to check out this video right over here.